So welcome everyone um, to this parade service. We're all together today, which is great. A special welcome to the scout sections who are here. I think the brownies and rainbows and guys are off doing camp things today um, at camp. Um, and so thank you for the families who have been able to join us today. You're very welcome. Um, my name's Emma and I'll be leading us through this morning and Glenda will come and share with us a bit in a minute. But for now, let's stand as we begin our service together. Let's stand together. Please do sit down. Hello to those of you who have just joined us. You're very welcome too. Um, you may have noticed there's a piece of paper on your seat. You'll need that later, so maybe try not to fiddle with it or tear it or make it into something. We'll come back to that a bit later. I know it's very tempting, so there are spares, so that's fine. Um, so a question to get us started this morning. How are you feeling today? Maybe you're happy and fine, lovely. Maybe you're a bit sad or not feeling 100%. Maybe you can relate to one of these words that will be hopefully up on the screen. There you go. Maybe one of those words is what you're feeling. Confident, determined, hesitant, curious. I don't know any of those. Calm, overwhelmed, I hope not optimistic. There's lots of things we can feel. And I don't know what kind of week you've had. Maybe you've had a lot to do. Maybe you've been watching a lot of tennis, I don't know. Um, or maybe you've been rushing around trying to fit everything in. I know for families this is a mad half term with trips and this, that and the other and all lots of different activities before the summer break. So maybe you've been rushing around trying to fit all those things in. But however we're feeling this morning and whatever kind of week we've had, we're going to start with a prayer as we come to God as we are. So let's pray together. Dear God, we praise you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your many blessings in our lives. So however we're feeling this morning, may we know your peace. And I ask for your help and guidance and wisdom as we meet together, that we might open our hearts and minds to you. We thank you for this new day. Lord God, we welcome you here this morning as we meet together. You are God who is mighty to save and save us from our darkest times and choices. So we praise you, God. Amen. So we're going to sing our first song. Let's stand to sing, Come On and Celebrate. Shout, yeah. 
do sit down. So it's time for the news and notices, um, of which we, we don't have many. <laughs> um, but details of groups and activities can be found on the website beachesbaptist.org and information will be emailed out on the Beaches link email this week. Um, but we do have something fun to share because I think we have the Beavers or, is it Beavers or the Cubs? Cubs are going to come and share their promise in sign language that they've been learning this term. So they're very kindly and bravely going to come up, hopefully, and share their promise with us. So if you want to come up, you're going to show. I promise you, you'll get the biggest round of applause you've ever had in your entire life. Okay, for doing this. Okay, so you need to say your promise and show us it in sign language. Done. Go and sit down. Well done. Thank you so much. That was really good. You've obviously learnt it very well. So, not all of us might know sign language, I don't know, but you know, maybe some of us are good at recognizing flags. I don't know in the countries they belong to. This is the link to a bit of a challenge that's coming up. So, there's going to be some flags on the screen. There's four flags, and I'd like you to tell me the country. So we go through them one by one. So the first flag, what country? Oh, hand straight up. Spain, excellent. Anybody been to Spain? Anybody going to Spain this year? Very popular country. Okay, next flag. Oh, your hand was straight up, but I'll choose someone else. Lois at the back. Israel, excellent. Anybody been to Israel? Yeah, excellent. Anybody going to Israel this year? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Next flag. Oh, Beth. Wales, okay. I bet that was a bit of a curveball. Okay, anybody been to Wales? Anybody going to Wales this year? Okay, a bit nearer though. Last one. Oh, your hands was up before. Okay. Oh, close. Well, sort of. Another guess. Another guess. Jonathan? Oh, no. This one's a tricky one. Lois, another guess? Saudi Arabia? No. Oh, good. I flummoxed you. Yep. Ramy? Japan, that was a bit of a guess, I think. <laughs> Afghanistan, no. Samuel, say loud. Bahrain, yes, well done. Excellent. Now, in no particular order, what's the connection between these flags? Any guesses? Isaac? They will have something on their flag. Yep, yeah, they do. That's true. That is a connection. Not the connection I was looking for. They all have white. These are very good. Yes? They all have stripes. Yep, yeah, that's it. Okay, any question? I'll give you... A clue, some of you might know, it's a clue to do with the Bible, something that's in the Bible. Well, they do in different ways, yep. Yeah. But I will give you, I, should I tell you? They're all places in the book of Dan, um, Daniel, I knew he said, Jonah, even, that's what we're looking at today, in the book of Jonah. But there's an odd one out. Some of us, even if we don't know the Bible very well, always cause controversy. Some of you, some.
some of you might have spotted the odd one out about the book of Jonah. Can you tell me? Because there's no whales in Jonah, there's only a big fish. Boom, boom. Okay. If you don't know the story of Jonah, we're coming back to it in this service, so hopefully that will all make sense. Okay, so let me tell you what those flags mean in connection with the book of Jonah in the Bible. Because we're continuing our series, little mini-series today, in chapter 4. And Jonah was someone that God asked to give special messages um, to others. And Jonah lived in northern Israel. That's why there's the Israel flag. And God asked him to go to a place called Nineveh, which is in modern-day Iraq, and give them this, his message. But Jonah bottled it and ran the other way, in the other direction, to a place that is in modern day Spain. But on the way, he turned back and encountered God through a fish, not through whales. Okay. Oh, I expected more from that. Okay. But in the, in the end, he went the right way and went back to God and did what he asked him to do. And we are going to come back to all that later. Um, and like I said, if you don't know the book of Jonah, that's okay. It'll all be explained. It's a very short book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, but there's lots to learn from it. And Glenda's going to share that with us later. But now we're going to stand to sing our next song. It's a song we sometimes do at parade services and all together services. So hopefully you'll know it. It's Our God is a Great Big God. Let's That's amazing. I love it when everyone gets really engaged in worship. Fantastic. Right. I need for this story four volunteers.
volunteers who've really got to be on... Right, come on. I know this young man. Come on. He's, he, he has to face me every day at school, so I'm going to let him, him out now. Right. Yes, come on, Jonathan. Isaac. <laughs> Sorry. So they've got to both. And we need one more. Yes, come on then, young lady. Right. I'm going to give you some pictures. Right. Don't think that this lot think, oh, that's okay now. It's okay. I haven't got to do anything. They're in for a treat. All right. Okay. So we'll have you holding that one out for them to show them. You'll have to turn it around. And we'll get you to hold that one. So two brothers together. Right. When they hold up a picture of Nineveh, everyone's got to go, Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. Okay. Come on, it's a bit better. Right, right. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. Bit better, bit better, bit better. Right. Here's a picture of me in the morning. Okay. Cheerful. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I'll pay you later. Right. <laughs> and this one for you. Right. You've got to use your imagination because Mr. Grumpy here is actually Jonah. Okay. So, when you hear the word Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. Nineveh. Okay. These guys are going to hold that one up. Okay. And when you hear the word groaner. Right, okay, for, for a minute. Who <coughs> moans and groans here? <laughs> Monday mornings. No, not really. I do come in with a smile, don't I? But we all grumble, yes? We've got, you know, I was having this conversation with my friend the other night, room, room 101, oh yes, I love it. So now I just point to it, if, if somebody upsets me when I'm driving, I just go, room 101. That's, that's a good way to get round it, and it, it's great. If you didn't know room 101, what they do is that the, the thing they don't like, they put in this thing and pull a lever and it disappears. So, yeah, something like that. Anyway, I digress. Right, okay. Um, so... This is the story of Jonah. And, oh, I should say, what you've all got to do in your best voices. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, really get into the part, okay? Really get into the part here. Oh, some good acting going on here. Okay. So you've got to listen out for this. And so some of this story we know already. We've covered it. But the exciting bit is part three is coming. So first of all, we're going to do the other parts that we've done before. So are you, are you listening out for your word as well, Jonah and Nineveh? Yeah, okay, right. Jonah the groaner. Mm. Oh. They're good, they're good. That's good. Right, Jonah was a groaner. That's right, a groaner. So when God told him to go to Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. Very good. All right, don't get too excited now. Don't get too excited. To tell the people who lived there to change their evil ways, what did Jonah do? Jonah groaned. Mm. Not Nineveh, he groaned. Anywhere but Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. The people who live there are our enemies. And when he had stopped groaning, Jonah oh, no. brought himself a ticket. A ticket for a boat ride. Now, he didn't, he didn't go on planes. No, they're, they're striking or not riding, and he didn't go, he didn't go on a, a train because they go on strike too. He, he got a ticket for a boat, much safer. Could have gone on a bus, but he had to cover water, so a bit of a problem there, okay? So he got a ticket for a boat ride, a boat ride that would take him far away from Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. <laughs> God listened to Jonah groan. 
God watched him buy his ticket. But God still wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh. So when the boat reached the deepest part of the sea, God sent a storm. Oh, God, please help us, cried a sailor. We're sinking. God, please save us, cried another. We're tipping over. God must be very angry, cried the captain, with someone here on board. So he's obviously looking around. What did Jonah do? You're very good at this. Yeah, you're right. He groaned, absolutely. It's me, groaner jo uh, groaner Jones. Jonah groaned. <laughs> I'm the one that God's angry with. He told me to go to Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. And here I am sailing in the opposite direction. Throw me into the sea and your troubles will be over. God forgive us, the sailors cried, as they tossed Jonah into the water and all and almost at once the sea grew calm oh dear jonah groaned i'm sinking oh no jonah groaned i'm going to drown oh my jonah groaned that's the biggest fish i've ever seen and before he could groan another groan the fish opened its mouth and swallowed Jonah up it was God who sent the fish to rescue Jonah he shouldn't have groaned really at that point and and to give him time to th um, to think he had plenty to groan about of course the fish's slimy stomach. Ugh. The seaweed. Ugh. Gets around your feet, doesn't it? Yes. And the smell. It's okay. We haven't got seaweed in here. You're all right there. And the smell. Ooh, phew, phew. But Jonah was still alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, he shouldn't be. He'd go, yay! He was still alive. Yeah. But he probably still moaned. And that was something to cheer about. So Jonah stopped his groaning ah, and said a prayer. I was sinking, Lord. I was drowning, but you saved me. So I will do whatever you want me to do. Three days later, the fish spat Jonah up on a beach. So we're going to change it now. When we hear Jonah, you're going to cheer. Okay, so he spat Jonah on a beach. Yay! <laughs> And Jonah kept his promise. Yeah. He went straight to Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. And he told the people that God wanted them to change their evil ways. Forty days is all you've got, he said. And if you haven't changed by then, God's going to destroy your city. The people of Nineveh... They listened, okay, they listened, and they cried. Then the people of Nineveh changed. From the king right down to the poorest slave, they decided to do what was right. And this is the bit we haven't heard yet, so this is part three. And what did Jonah do? He didn't. He groaned again. Oh, no. Yeah, he groaned. He sat himself down in the shadow of a tree and he groaned. Come on, we'll have a big groan. I knew this would happen, he groaned. Now, you are a loving God who loves to forgive, but I still don't like the people of Nineveh. wish they'd all been destroyed. Ooh. Ooh, man. 
Jonah fell asleep. Typical man on the job. So there we go. Jonah fell asleep, groaning. And during the night, God sent a worm to kill the tree. When Jonah awoke, he groaned even more. Oh, the tree is dead, he groaned. And now I have no shade. Oh, Jonah. God sighed. You cry about this tree, but you care nothing for the people of Nineveh. I want you to love them like I do. And finally, God added, I want you to stop your groaning. Oh, then that's the story of Jonah. Right, thank you, um, you four. Great, well done. Thank you. So I wonder, when was the last time you said or thought, or maybe even groaned, it's not fair, that's not fair. Maybe you've been asked to do something you don't think is fair or right. Maybe something hasn't worked out as you wanted it to. Or maybe you've just seen things around you or in the world that just don't seem very fair. And maybe it just seems that some things aren't fair at all. We just heard that Jonah certainly felt that way, didn't he? He didn't think it was fair that God was so merciful. And Jonah showed this by getting angry. His feelings were mixed up and he got mad at God. So we're going to think about this in a roundabout way. And we are going to use, hope you can see, we are going to use this makes sense it's a whisk because a whisk what does a whisk do mixes up, mixes up things excellent and when i was growing up my job before sunday lunch was to whisk the cream yes we did have an electric mixer but my mum gave me one of these because it took longer i think and it stopped me asking when lunch was going to be and i groaned a bit And I moaned a bit because it took ages to whisk up that cream. And we are going to do that just now. So I need three volunteers. Maybe people who haven't volunteered for something else. So we can spread it out. I'm just going to cover the table up just in case. Because I have some cream that I'm going to put in this bowl. And actually, top tip, if you're ever whisking cream with a hand whisk, put it on a tea towel, stops the bowl moving. There you go. Years of experience of whisking up cream. Um, So I'm going to put some cream. I had to keep it cold. Da-da-da. Co-op special. Double cream. Very nice. Let's pour some in the bowl. Whoop. There you go. And that's another reason why I got a tea towel. Um, so, three volunteers who haven't had to go at something else. I can't see through. Um, have you had to go at something else? Do you want to come up? You've got to have strong arms. Do you want to come up? And who else hasn't had to go at something? Have you not had to go at something? Come on then. Okay, have you got strong arms? Yes. So, let me show you. If you come around here... So I'm going to tell you a bit more about Jonah, and as I do, I need you to whisk, okay? So, like that. Easy to do. Yeah? Okay. But every time I say the word mixed, you need to pass it to the next person and do it a bit faster, and then pass it to the next person and do it a bit faster, and then pass it back to you and do it a bit faster. Can you do that? You are going to have a very strong arm after this I promise okay so you know what you're doing okay so as I talk you get mixing off you go because maybe 
you have felt that life is a bit mixed up sometimes. A bit faster. Jonah knew God. Jonah was the, an Israelite, but he knew the Assyrians were not far away. And in the 8th century BC, the Assyrians were the enemy of the Israelites. And they were big, bad news. Keep whisking. They were cruel people. A bit like me making them whisk. <laughs> not really. <laughs> they killed men, women, and children. God told Jonah to go straight to Nineveh, to the capital of Assyria, to give them his message of doom and destruction, their, the consequences of their actions. But the thought of this seemed very mixed up. Oh, you did it already. <laughs> very mixed up. Bit faster, bit faster, bit faster. Oh, amazing. Tip the bowl, top tip, tip the bowl. There you go. Excellent. It seemed very mixed up to Jonah. It didn't seem like a good idea. So after getting mixed up and in a mess by trying to run away, Jonah eventually does the right thing and delivers that message from God. The people of Nineveh at that time didn't get mixed up. <laughs> they got the message and they understood it. And they turned back to God and changed their ways. So God was compassionate and merciful towards them, which left Jonah all mixed up <laughs> in a new way. And he gets angry at God even though he knew that God was just and merciful when people truly turned to him. Jonah got angry with God, and he quickly forgot that God had been merciful and compassionate to him and, all, and his people. And his anger got him really mixed up. <laughs> she was desperate, she was like, please... Right, how are we doing? We'll, have, we'll pause there. How are we doing? Because this...
this will all make sense in one minute. So in getting mixed up and angry, Jonah forgot the most important thing. Jonah knew God, but he forgot to trust him. He forgot to trust in God's mercy and compassion more than his own mixed up feelings. So we stopped mixing it up. So now we need to trust that it's not going to fall on our heads. <laughs> Can you trust? Yeah, you think? Trust isn't always easy, but it's always worth it. Ready? I'm going to hold you over your head. One, two, three. Yay! Yeah. Hey. Yay! Hey. 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 There we go. Okay, you can go and sit down. Well done. See, I told you it was worth it. Except I've got cream all over my hands. So, maybe like Jonah, things in life seem mixed up and confusing to you sometimes. For us here today, we can remember to trust that God can help us, to save us, if we choose to trust and turn back to him with our lives. And God has shown his mercy to us through Jesus. In Romans 58, 5, 8 in the Bible, it tells us God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's not get mixed up. We can trust that God continues to show his mercy to all people, all nations, to us through Jesus, he who is mighty to save. And with this in mind, we're going to stand to sing our next song, Everyone Needs Compassion. So let's stand together.
please do sit down. So we're just going to spend a short time in prayer now, or sit quietly if you prefer. And on your seat, you should have found a square bit of paper. It's colored paper, and we'll use this as we just spend some time in prayer. So if you hold the piece of paper and look at the color, and think about the good things in your life. And the things that you like doing. And maybe quietly you can say thank you to God for these things. The good things in your life. And the things you like doing. So now if you screw up the piece of paper into a loose ball. Probably not too tight. And then hold it in your hands and look at your screwed up piece of paper. And think about the people now who might be finding life tough. People who are ill or tired or lonely or sad or afraid. And quietly in your heart, ask God to help them and be with them. Those people who are finding life tough at the moment. So now we're going to smooth out, open up your piece of paper and smooth it out into a square shape as much as possible. And as you do that, think about the people or situations that you might feel mixed up about. Maybe there are things that are worrying you, things that are ahead of you or things that have happened that you feel mixed up about as you smooth out your piece of paper. Quietly pray and ask God to help you to smooth these things out in your life and to make a way. As you hold your piece of paper in front of you, let's just pray. Lord God, we offer up these prayers of our hearts today. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you that you love us, that you care for us, that your compassion is great for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you're welcome to take your piece of paper home with you if you'd like, or there's a blue box at the back and on the way out, if you pop them in there, we can recycle them or maybe do something else with them. Um, And also just to say, hopefully I've got one here, there are a few of the little Jonah series encouragement cards that have the prayer that, part of the prayer that Jonah prayed which says, I called to the Lord and he answered me. I cried out to you and you heard my voice. There's some more. If you haven't taken one already, maybe you'd like to take one and give give one to somebody else this week to encourage them in some way. So there's some in the basket outside at refreshments. Um, We've come to the end of our time together. And so thank you all for joining us today. Please do come back into the cafe area for refreshments after we've sung our final song together. So we're going to stand together to close this service. Um, So let's stand as we sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord.